Well, I'm Piers Corbyn from Weather Action, Long Range Weather and Climate Forecasters. And I'm here today to talk to you about what's happened during this April, uh, what's going to happen in May, and then we'll have some words about the future of climate wars, what's going to happen on the climate change issue, um, scientifically, politically, and uh, in all other ways. Okay, our April forecast uh, for Britain, Ireland and the world has gone very well and we made significant advances in forecasting science. The mid part of April in Britain and Ireland was actually not as cool as we thought it would be in the south, although in Scotland things were pretty well according to plan. But apart from that, uh, we are very pleased. The later part of April in the British Isles has been very importantly spot on, where we said it would be a warm, uh, dry, sunny uh, last few days. And then we also predicted as part of our election forecast that it would turn uh, cold uh, and wet uh, in most parts of the United Kingdom uh, for the first couple of days or so of May. However, it would also then turn bright and dry and fine and uh, warmer um, by election day. And that forecast seems to be holding. We'll say a bit more later about what is going to happen in May. The extreme events around the world in April have been especially important. Um, we predicted that the um, 18th to the 24th would see some important extreme events. Um, and on the uh, 13th, uh, there was a major um, coronal mass ejection on the sun, which is a great body of bits of the solar corona break away and head out into space and the edges of that uh, hit Earth. Now of course the timing of that means that uh, four or five days later they would hit Earth and form one of the factors which would actually power up the solar or weather impact period of 18 to the 24th, give or, give or take a day. So that event on the sun was the precursor of our predicted events on the Earth. And uh, we also said that in that period, uh, because of some new researches we had done, it was likely that that volcano would actually power up. Uh, and it did despite the uh, initial expectations that it, it uh, started to decline. The volcano in Iceland powered up and uh, flights were then being delayed for longer. However, they changed the rules. So although our forecast of what the volcano circulation was doing was correct, it didn't have the ongoing impact on air flights. But the end of the month, uh, after the 24th, it turned dry and fine generally in Britain and Ireland uh, as we predicted with more south winds and southeast winds. So the last part of that period, 24th and 25th, was very significant. Uh, a giant tornado struck 17 states in America and killed at least 10 people. And that was confirming our prediction of the period April to 21st to 25th having a lot of tornadoes in the USA, in particular 21st or 22nd and the 24th, 25th. And there were loads of tornadoes in the build-up to that and then across the USA and then this gigantic one uh, in which uh, 10 people were killed with these 150 mile an hour winds. At the same time, there were floods in New Zealand, dust storms in China, the Sahara and India and Pakistan which uh, were dramatic vindications of our forecast of extremes. <clears throat> now our extreme uh, events forecasting is continuing and the next round is interesting because for the period the 29th of April to the 3rd of May and we're in that now, although we expect the tail of this to be the most significant time, uh, we've made some entirely new forecasts of 
uh, extreme events uh, likely to happen around the world, although only a 65% confidence. So not all of these three are most likely to happen, but there may be aspects of them happening in all cases. We're expecting it's likely to have some major floods in uh, uh, Azerbaijan, um, which is uh, part of the former Soviet Union. Uh, we're expecting uh, major floods in I Israel or the South Negev Desert or near the Red Sea, um, around there. Um, and we're also expecting some major snowstorms in Antarctica, um, in the Murdoch Sound or Roth Ice Shelf general area. Uh, this is based on interesting research as we did about past weather. Uh, you can't see that on the map because the map doesn't go far enough near the South Pole. So watch out for those um, uh, events in early, early May. Um, we will um, be issuing further extreme events forecasts uh, for the rest of May. Now, May in Britain uh, and Ireland uh, is going to be not happy for the global warmers once again. Um, it's going to be often showery and cool. Uh, although there will be some major north-south differences and Ireland will often be finer than uh, certainly northeastern England and Scotland. Um, if you want fuller details of that, please come on our website. Okay. Well, the climate change industry in the last month has been very active trying to defend the indefensible. And we're having a series of three climate change cover-up reports. The first one, produced by MPs, came out at the end of March. And there I would say that that revealed more about the MPs than it did about the science. And it revealed that the MPs are, I would say, of trivial moral fibre and an even smaller grasp of scientific method. One MP, though, Graham Stringer, to his credit, did stand out and say that uh, he was extremely sceptical of the claims made. The second report came out mid-April, which was uh, another somewhat rushed job by Lord Oxborough, who's got his uh, fingers, head, shoulders and whole body uh, deep into the climate change industry pie. So possibly his, his comments and the results of his inquiry were not surprising. Um, he was basically just covering up for the University of East Anglia and said that there was no evidence that he could see that there was anything wrong with their science. But since he wasn't even looking at their science, it's not surprising he found no evidence. He would have been equally fair to say there was no evidence that there was anything in their science because he wasn't looking at the science anyway. So there will be a third report in due course, which I'm sure will do the same sort of whitewash. But whatever it says, scientists with integrity have to carry on banging the drum, demanding evidence, evidence, evidence. And the public, viewers, please, demand evidence from your members of parliament. So in the days, months, weeks, uh, years after the general election, we can force them into standing for evidence-based science and evidence-based policies and join any campaign you can on the matter. Thank you.